Shalom all. We continue our study of the Bible, Genesis to Revelations. We are today on chapters 4 to 7. We're Moses after the burning bush um, meeting with God, talks to God. God instructs him to return to Egypt and perform some miracles to bring his people out via the, um, the plagues, the miracles he will do. Remember to read or listen to the whole chapters, but note the pointed out verses below. Today's account starts with Moses uh, talking to God after the meeting and God speaking to him. Um, I will start chapter 4, verse 3, God speaking. And he said, cast it down on the ground, and he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it, from before it. My comment. This is where God, Moses is um, not wanting to go, you know, he hasn't got the confidence, and God is convincing him to go. He gave him a rod, um, he threw it on the ground, and God made it turn to a serpent to show the miracles of it. Now, though the English translation it says a serpent in the Bible as in a hissing snake, I'm told in Hebrew it, it is better described as a crocodile. Moving on to verse 6, and Yahweh said furthermore unto him, Put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Um, now there is an argument that Moses must, by a group of people, or certain groups of people, that Moses must have been of a dark or black colour because a Caucasian or other colour cannot turn white. We all know that's not so. People go white with fear and so on, Caucasians do. So that's not factual. Um, there are many shades of white in any case, and neither are Caucasians actual white, as a white as a, as, a, as a sheet or snow. The Bible has a word for white, as we saw used with Jacob and Laban's sheep in Genesis chapter 30, verse 35, I covered that before, or the basket on the baker's head in Genesis chapter 40, verse 16. In any case, snow has many attributes apart from its colour, i.e. softness and so on, and later we shall see other factors of a leprous person, um, i.e. It, it is like a raw skin and so on. Um, anyway, we covered that, I'll come down in Leviticus. In any case, we have seen the composition of Israel is a multi-coloured group of people. Persons. Verse 15, and thou shalt speak to him, God continues speaking to Moses, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth. Um, talking about Aaron, because Moses is saying that he can't, he's not good enough to speak, and God is saying that Aaron can assist him. Continue. Continue. And will teach you what you shall do, and he shall be thy spokesman, meaning Aaron, to Moses. And unto thy people, unto the, the people, and he who shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. Thou shalt be to him instead of God. So God was going to tell Moses what to say, but due to his objections, saying he's not eloquent enough, God said he would speak to Moses, and Moses will speak to Aaron on what to say. And as a result, we got verse 16. This is similar to the New Testament, Matthew 10 and 19, which reads, But when, this is Yeshua talking to his apostles, But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. And also in Luke 21, verse 14. Okay, back to Exodus chapters 4, verse 20. And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. So remember the sons of the Midianite woman. Verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus saith Yahweh, Israel is my first son, even my firstborn. So make a note of that. Israel the nation is now the first nation of God has created for himself um, his firstborn, and he's going to be like a son to him. 
to Yahweh God. Verse 23. And I, and I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. The composite nation of various origins is God's child, redeemed to serve God. Exodus chapter 20, remember when we later come on to commandments of the relationship between a child and parent. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy God giveth thee. Also Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Colossians 3.20 Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto Yahweh. So that is the pattern. Um, children obey their parents, and Israel, or we, as God's children, should also obey Him. In not just in the Continued from verse 25. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a blood husband art thou to me. So this is Zipporah, um, Moses' wife, because Moses failed to circumcise the son. The son, he says, she did for one son, and circumcision was of eight days. So this is a newborn son that Moses did not circumcise the eighth day. Did Moses know about circumcision having been in Egypt for 430 years? Less than 40 years he was with Jethro in Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. We shall see later. However, his wife saved him by performing the law. Remember Tamar, who performed the law with Judah um, when Judah didn't give the last son to her when his other two sons were killed by God? And later Ruth, who followed the law. Your God will be my God. Women can remind men about adhering to God's laws. Exodus chapter 4, verse 30. And Aaron spake all the words which Yahweh had spoken unto Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. And this is where, where they went back to the elders and gathered the elders together to tell them what God had told them to do. Verse 31. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahweh had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. So God's signs are to bring on believers to acknowledge and receive the message of his messenger. It was what got Yeshua the Messiah, the recognition and acceptance by many in the New Testament. And we also told by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 22, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe and not. Therefore, it's not a, something to be done in church where believers are. The devil's agents also use this method of miracles or performing things. We read this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Even him who is coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. And we shall see also below, um, with Pharaoh's magicians, in, in chapter 7, verse 12, they also can do magic tricks. Okay, chapter 5, verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahweh, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Verse 2, And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not, not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. So after all the miracles that God is going to perform, we shall see um, he will know who Yahweh, the God of Moses, is. Um, in verse 12, verse 32, when he lets them go, he shall say to Moses, also take your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone. And bless me also. This is also um, done in Daniel chapter 4, when King Nebuchadnezzar thought that he ruled the world, because of all the big empire he had. 
and God turned him into an animal for a while so that he realized um, Daniel's God was in control. And he later came to recognize and stated that. As I said, you should be reading these um, chapters yourself or listening to them if you're short of time on your phone or so. So I'm going to jump down to... Cause you can cause you some concern, or you may not understand. So this does not mean that Abraham and Isaac did not know God's name. We saw in places as Genesis chapters 12 verse 8 and 14 verses 18 and 22 that they did. People before them in the days of Noah or after Noah called on the name of God. So a better understanding of the Hebrew word known, they did not know him, yada which has a Hebrew numerical word number identification of H3034, is really to know by experience. God, in chapter 314, remember, said to Moses, I am who I am, or basically I can be what I can be. Israel, the nation, was now going to have an experience and knowledge of God through his, through his redemptive powers as an exhibition of his powers that the forefathers did not experience. So that is what the, the known is, means. Okay, verse 6. Exodus 6, verse 6. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of the, their bondage, and I, will, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am Yahweh, your God, which bringeth you out from under rule. So it brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So note the point of their lives, and that God calls bondage, is a substitute to another control, the Egyptians, let's say. So when you're in Egypt or the world, you're in um, bondage. People think that you talk that when they come out into the world that they're free. But no, you're you're still in bondage. You're only free when you're in on the God system and keep um and his protection. So God's going to take them out of that place to where he took them and, what, and sorry, what he gave them. So he's going to give them things that they do not have and the freedom that they do not have. But it will come at a, at a price, if you can call it that, because it will be switching lives, switching your, your mentality, switching your, your way of worship system, switching your faith and things you do. Now many preachers today, using the New Testament, have reversed what is bondage and what is not. They cannot change what God calls bondage. God calls being under Egyptian control bondage, but he took them out of that and gave them his laws and his commandments, and keep being under them is not bondage, as some of the preachers will teach you. Or what they call legalism, when there's no such term in the Bible. Okay, 6 verse 15. And the sons of Simeon, Jewel, and Jamin, and Ohad, and Jacin, and so forth. The sons of the Canaanitish woman. These are the families of Simeon. So again, we see the mixed multitude um, that makes up the my people of God. So I'm going to jump down now to chapter 7, starting at verse 4. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, again God speaking unto Moses, shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So God is interchanging between calling them the children of Israel and calling them my people. Um, Exodus chapter 5 verse 2, remember, where Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh that I should obey his voice? To let my people know, to let my people go, I know not him. 
neither will I let Israel go. So God is saying that they will know. Verse 7, And Moses was fourscore years old, and Aaron fourscore and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. Verse 10, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, um, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in a like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. So remember, we do not use signs and wonders as, a, as something being of God. And many people flock into churches, and people are using signs and wonders and healing as an advert to get people into their congregations. That is not um, things of God. It doesn't mean only God can do those things, and that you should choose a church because of signs and wonders. Remember, Satan has his agents, can also do miracles. See also verses 22. So we must be able to discern from whom pastors are getting the power, God or Satan. We can determine when people are getting the power from God or from Satan, I said, because in second, even in the Bible it tells us that um, Satan can do these things, as we just saw the magicians of um, Egypt can do miracleish things. I'll take you one from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13. Speaking of, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. So we can tell if people, we, we hear lots of stories about pastors doing wrong things in their congregations um, or to, and to the congregations. So we can tell if people are really of God and getting the power of God if they're keeping the commandments of God, um, not because they're rich or do good sermons or motivate people and so forth, but if their lives are in line with that of the commandments of God. And that is what our studies are for, to discern whether our lives or our teachers are teaching us the commandments of God or traditions of men. The commandments of God as they interpret to be, or, or they are taught by their denomination, but as it states in the Bible. The days of worship, the times of worship, the things they do and so on. So I'm going to now end in verse 16. Exodus chapter 7 verse 16 And thou shalt say unto him, God speaking unto Moses to say unto Pharaoh, Yahweh God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith Yahweh, In this thou shalt know that I am Yahweh. Shalom. Speak to you tomorrow, hopefully.